can fly in the sky I can go twice as high Take a look, it's in a book A reading rainbow I can go anywhere Happy Literacy Night! My name is Miss Juliet and I'm teacher of the Penguins. Today I'm going to start your night off with Flowers Are Calling, Words by Rita Gray, and Pictures by Kindred Pack. Flowers are calling a little black bear. No, not a bear. He doesn't care. They're calling a butterfly to dip from the air. Flowers are calling a wet green frog. No, not a frog. She likes her soggy bog. They're calling a bumblebee to look near their log. Flowers are calling a porcupine. Not a porcupine, she wouldn't take the time. They're calling a hummingbird to sip at their vine. Queen Anne's lace butterflies like a landing pad when they drink nectar. Monk shook. Bumblebees are hefty enough to push deep inside a monk shook flower where nectar is stored. Trumpet honeysuckle, hummingbirds use their long tongues to reach the nectar hidden in deep tubular flowers and hover as they drink. Flowers are calling a loud blue jay. No, not a jay, he wouldn't stay. They're calling a honeybee to fly their way. Flowers are calling a little moose. No, not a moose, what would be the use? They're calling a beetle to eat their pollen loose. Flowers are calling a rabbit to stop. No, not a rabbit. It's not their habit to call a rabbit. He might grab it. They're calling a beef to fly and visit their spot. In the page. Apple tree blossoms are where honeybees help make many of the fruits, nuts, and vegetables we eat by pollinating fruit trees. Magnolias have beetles have been visiting these flowers for more than 100 million years. And violets, where bees, bees fly, look like bumblebees, but have two wings instead of four. Flowers are calling a small brown snake. No, not a snake, for goodness sake. They're calling a pollen wasp with nectar to take. Flowers are calling a fat raccoon. No, not a raccoon. He doesn't care for white, blot, white bloom or sweet perfume. They're calling a moth in the light of the moon. Flowers are calling a desert deer. No, not a deer. He can't even get near. They're calling a nectar bat, bat to flap over here. Blow out Beard tongue is a pollen wasp like bees make lo loaves of nectar and pollen to feed their young. And cardin cactus are lesser long nosed bats that have long tongues that can reach nectar. Moonflowers and California sphinx moss are expert flyers with very long tongues. Flowers are calling a busy wren. No, not a wren, he's already seen them. They're calling some children to look again. Look at a flower. What do you see? Colors, patterns, shapes. The smell of a flower, the time it opens. Would you believe? And then there's just a little bit about flowers in the back. So our book today was about flowers and the different creatures that pollinate them or take the nectar out to create honey or different things that we need or regenerate new flowers. Be sure to be on the lookout for the rest of the other videos from the other teachers and enjoy literary night. from the Hummingbird's Room and I am going to read A Color of His Own by Leo Liani. Parrots are green, goldfish are red. Elephants are gray, pigs are pink. All animals have a color of their own. 
except for chameleons. They change color wherever they go. On lemons, they are yellow. In the heather, they are purple. And on the tiger, they are striped like tigers. One day, a chameleon who was sitting on a tiger's tail said to himself, If I remain on a leaf, I shall be green forever, and so I too will have a color of my own. With this thought, he cheerfully climbed onto the greenest leaf. But in autumn, the leaf turned yellow, and so did the chameleon. Later, the leaf turned red, and the chameleon too turned red. And then the winter wind blew the leaf from the branch, and with it, the chameleon. The chameleon was black in the long winter night. But when spring came, he walked out into the green grass, and there he met another chameleon. He told his sad story. Won't we ever have a color of our own? he asked. I'm afraid not, said the other chameleon, who was older and wiser. But, he added, why don't we stay together? We will still change color wherever we go, but you and I will always be alike. And so they remained side by side. They were green together. And purple. And yellow. And red with white polka dots. And they lived happily ever after. Hey there, you cool cats and kittens. Happy Literacy Night. I am Miss Crystal, and I am here to read you your last story for the evening. I hope everyone have enjoyed all the stories that the other teachers have read to you. So I'm here to read you one of my favorite stories to read to my class. It is near and dear to my heart, and I'm so glad I get to share it with you. This story is called The True Story of the Three Little Pigs by a wolf, or as told by John Sienska and illustrated by Lane Smith. Everybody knows the story of the three little pigs, or at least they think they do. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Nobody knows the real story because nobody has ever heard my side of the story. I'm the wolf, Alexander T. Wolf. You can call me Al. I don't know how this whole big bad wolf thing got started, but it's all wrong. Maybe because it's our diet. Hey, it's not my fault. Well, wolves eat cute little animals like bunnies and sheep and pigs. That's just the way we are. If cheeseburgers were cute, folks would probably think you were big and bad too. But like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing is all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. This is the real story. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Way back in once upon a time time, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny. I had a terrible sneezing cold. I ran out of sugar. So I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. 
Now this neighbor was a pig and he wasn't too bright either. He had built his whole house out of straw. Can you believe it? I mean, who in their right mind will build a house out of straw? So, of course, the minute I knocked on the door, it fell right in. I didn't want to just walk into somebody else's house. So, I called, little pig, little pig, are you in? No answer. I was just about to go home without that cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. That's when I start, my nose started to itch. I felt a sneeze coming on. Well, I huffed and I snuffed and I sneezed a great sneeze. Said, shoo! Woo! And you know what? That whole darn straw house fell down. And right in the middle of the pile was the first little pig dead as a doornail. He had been home the whole time. It seemed like a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner lying there in the straw, so I ate it up. Think of it as a big cheeseburger just lying there. I was feeling a little better, but I still didn't have my cup of sugar, so I went to the next door neighbor's house. This neighbor was the first little pig's brother. He was a little smarter, but not much smarter. He had built his house out of sticks. I rang the doorbell on the stick house. Nobody answered. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? He yelled back, go away, wolf. You can't come in. I'm shaving the hairs off my chitty chin chin. I had just grabbed the doorknob when I felt another sneeze coming on. So I huff and I snuff and I tried to cover my mouth, but I sneezed a great sneeze. Achoo! And you're not going to believe it, but this guy's house fell down just like his brother's. When the dust cleared, there was the second little pig dead as a doornail. Whoops, honor. Now you know food will spoil if you just leave it out and open. So I did the only thing that was the right to do at dinner again. Think of it as a second helping. I was just, I was getting awfully full, but my cold was feeling a little better. And I still didn't have that cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. So I went to the next house. This guy was the first and the second little pig's brother. He must not have been the brains in the family. He had built his house out of bricks. I knocked on the brick house. No answer. I called Mr. Pig. Mr. Pig, are you in? And do you know what that rude little porker answered? Get out of here, wolf. Don't bother me again. <gasps> Talk about impolite. He probably had a whole sack full of sugar and wouldn't give me even one little cup for my dear old granny's birthday cake. What a pig. I was just about to go home and maybe make a nice birthday card instead of a cake when I felt my cold coming on. So I huff and I snuff and I sneeze once again. Achoo! Then the third little pig yelled, and your old granny can sit on a pen. Oh. Now, I'm usually a pretty calm fella, but when somebody talks about my granny like that, I go a little crazy. So when the cops came and drove up, of course I was trying to break down that pig's door. And the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a real scene. Then the 
The rest, as they said, it's history. The news reporter found out about the two pigs I had for dinner. They figured a sick guy going to borrow a cup of sugar didn't sound very exciting. So they jazzed up the story with all that huff and puff and blow your house down. And they made me the big bad wolf. That's it. The real story. I was framed. But maybe you can loan me a cup of sugar. <laughs> the end. If you like that story, give it two claps. Two more. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in for our literacy night. And guess what? There's a fun activity after each story. So go ahead, play it back for your for your kiddos, and you guys can do this activity together as a family. Thank you for tuning in. See you next time. Butterfly in the sky. I can go twice as high. Take a look. It's in a book, a reading rainbow. 